sometimes less is more. But sometimes less is just less? The Herald looks like Drake's engineers attached a cockpit to an engine block. So how does that stack up in-game? I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the Star Citizen ship, the Drake Herald. Star Citizen is currently in alpha testing, with the Herald as one of the flyable ships. The Herald is a multi-crew capable ship, so you could bring a friend along with you, and is described as a data runner. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you'll recognise the usual format for this video. This review is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the 80% of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1 – Ship Tour And somewhat unusually for Star Citizen ships, entrance to the Drake Herald is actually on the right or starboard side. Just behind the cockpit there's visible a door with a yellow keypad, and this drops down a ladder which allows entry into the Herald. Upon entering the Herald, right at the front is visible the pilot's chair in the cockpit. There's a weapons rack, and a support station for a second crew member. Throughout the Herald are these little storage boxes, and most notably the servers for data running. There's also a small toilet and sink. At the back, finally, there's a bed for safe logout. Part 2 – Combat Performance Whilst the Herald is not a combat ship per se, it does carry an interesting armament loadout. The primary weapons are a size 3 slot, by default swapped for size 2 gimbals, and two weapons at size 2 default into size 1 gimbals. All of the stock weapons are ballistic repeaters, which is nice, and the arc on the gimbals is fairly forgiving too, so you're likely to start landing rounds on target fairly quickly. All considered, the armament is weaker than you'd find on a dedicated fighter at a similar price point, and unless you use the size 3 hardpoint with a fixed weapon, is likely to leave you feeling that the Herald is a little lacklustre in the firepower department. That said, against smaller targets, especially the sort of interceptors that are likely to compete with the top speeds that the Herald can offer, the armament actually does a reasonable job. The Herald also carries eight size 1 missiles, which are fairly weak, but also fairly cheap, so you can just throw multiple missiles at a target if required. Defensively, the Herald carries two size 1 shield generators. That's fairly standard for ships at this price point, but it does mean that the Herald can't really stand much punishment. Time spent in the ship has definitely borne that out, with a couple of untimely explosions, more than would usually be expected. So from a combat perspective, the Herald largely doesn't stack up well, but then again, this isn't a ship that really wants to be in combat, so that makes sense. Part 3 – Handling and Visibility Starting with visibility, Actually, the Herald is one of the better offerings amongst the Drake ships. Although there are some struts that slightly obstruct your field of view, visibility to the sides, below and up top is fairly reasonable. Straight line speed is also a strength for the Herald, which is able to achieve well over 1360 meters per second. Acceleration to or braking from those speeds, however, takes a little time. And as soon as you want to start turning, that's when things fall away. So the Herald is definitely a data runner until you want to change direction. In atmosphere, things get even tougher. Because the power is derived from the engines at the back, straight line performance continues to be okay, but critically, any other movement, including keeping the nose up, is really strained, with the thrusters just not able to keep pace. 
Most notable for anyone who tends to fly aircraft with wings is the very slow roll rate and the limited strafing performance. This is a ship you'll want to get to altitude as quickly as possible. Somewhat confusingly, at low speeds however, the Herald is actually fairly easy to land, largely due to the fact that the engine placement keeps you fairly straight and level. As far as quantum drive goes, usual spiel here, replace the stock drive, but actually the quantum fuel stores in the Herald are very reasonable, offering a decent range for such a small ship. Part 4 – Operating Costs the Herald is very cheap to operate, with refuel, repair and rearming costs barely scraping three figures. Moreover, the high speeds of the Herald means that it can use the hydrogen scoop somewhat effectively, if you've got some open space to run in and a little time. As far as making money with the Herald, its intended purpose of data running isn't yet an option in game. However, it'll make a bit of money at using the internal space for box delivery contracts, which the Herald handles just fine. Sadly, there's no onboard cargo space. It is possible, with some care, to make money from simple combat missions in the Herald, although you'll probably need to be a super fan or a very patient pilot. Part 5 – The Verdict so, it's important here to reinforce that the intended gameplay for this ship isn't yet possible in-game. That said, as with all of my reviews, I try to focus on the here and now, as that's what I can fairly assess. One thing in favour of the Herald is that it's one of the cheaper ship options, coming in at $85 or 1.2 million Alpha UEC. That said, there are some really compelling alternatives at that price point, including some better options for combat such as the Gladius, or some more versatile options such as the Nomad or the Avenger. That said, the Herald is one of the cheapest proper multi-crew ships out there, meaning it has a dedicated seat for a second crew member, as well as a bed for logout. The other interesting thing here is the Drake style. Personally, it's not for me, but it's really unique, and for some players that rugged, more industrial environment will be a real plus. So I've, I've danced around it a bit, but unless you're sure that data running is what you're going to be into, and you're confident that CIG will deliver exactly what you're expecting that gameplay to look like, I'd be very nervous by buying this ship with real currency simply because you could instead buy something else, make the money in-game, and earn the Herald in-game. If you found this ship review helpful, you may also be interested in my review of the Nomad starter ship. Please also subscribe if you'd like to see future Star Citizen content. Outside of that, if you're looking for a group who plays Star Citizen regularly, I've included a link to my organisation in the video description. Thank you for watching.